So hi, I'm Christophe Gouet. I'm the project manager of the Middleware Studio branch where we develop a custom tailored application for the professionals. And I am with Pierre-Etienne Zanet, the project manager of the project Gazeduc yeah, at GLT Gas. Hello everyone. So maybe you want to introduce what is our project? We'll talk about this project. <laughs> okay, so uh, GLT Gas first. Um, GLT Gas has uh, 4,400 valve station to maintain and uh, to train the operators, we've made Gazeduc. Uh, it's a um, VR application um, where the, the, spe the special feature is uh, that uh, it's not a step-by-step -step application, but as you can see behind me, when you move a tap or an organ, um, the station reproduce the real um, the real station. It was imagined in 2015 by operators, and one year later, thanks to Middle VR, uh, a proof of concept was uh, launched. And um, this month, we received the last uh, version with four modes: a step-by-step -step mode, free-to-act mode, and two thought research mode. Um, cool, cool fact about it is that um, on average an operator um, meet breakdowns, no, failures, <laughs> failures, <laughs> yes, failures um, about two or three years. Um, but thanks to Gazeduc, they can meet them in one day and be prepared for it. So we'll talk about some things we, we went through in, through in this project. So maybe the first thing we would like to talk about is gather knowledge. It could be a very surprising uh, challenge for a company because uh, when you want to create a virtual reality application, we at Middleware have to write pretty much everything. We are creating one reality to train your, your guys. So this way, you need to be sure that you have all your scenarios prepared, all the possibilities you want to have in this application. And that this is challenging because sometimes when you, went, when you go through all your trainings, you can, you can have some differences like regional differences. At GLT Gas, they had a lot of differences because they don't have the same equipment. So they had to find out uh, how to create an homogene uh, knowledge tool. And for that, with our team, we went through the gas stations and experts to grab all the, the on-field knowledge. And we worked a lot to get uh, a one reality and only uh, some scenarios. After that, when you have all the knowledge you want to put in your system, you, you need to make it live because at first, Jessica has had this kind of schemes, and we wanted to create that. You have all your knowledge uh, live and very ready to be, uh, to be used directly by your trainees. So when you want to make them live, you need to create a simulator, a physics simulator. We created a gas flow simulation in this system, and it was a little bit challenging too, because all the gas experts at GRT Gas have the knowledge to use them and maintain them, but they don't really know exactly where uh, the gas uh, has turbulences, has the exact pressures, because this is on the, um, on the system organs, productors. This knowledge is on this side. So we had to dig a lot to get all the information to create the physics simulation. But when you talk about physics simulation, CV physics simulation is a tool that costs uh, a little bit, and you will, tell, you will tell me it's better to just buy some fixed scenarios when you want to train people, because here, when you have a very low investment, you can just write uh, fixed scenarios and you will be able to train on them. But you will only get uh, these training possibilities. You will just be able to uh, deploy these exact scenarios. But if in the future you, you know you will get there, maybe it's better to think about a simulator because when you have a gas system simulator, you can do pretty much 
what you want. You can ex you can experience what you want. So for that, uh, GRT guys knew they wanted to go there. So at first, for the first prototype, they wanted to create the gas simulation, only the gas simulation, and then add in some fixed scenarios to be able to get to get the um, standard procedures of GRT gas inside the system. <laughs> so um, maybe you're like me and you're more, uh, you know, this kind of classroom, you know, um, by chance you have a, a professor who is a little boring and um, the only thing you have in mind is the ring bell. And um, thanks to Gazeduc now, um, the formation is no longer in this classroom, but in this one. And um, the the station behaves like a real one. So the, the operator is free to move a tap, to uh, touch an organ and see what's going on. And um, he's free to feel what's going on inside, what's the gas flowing. And um, it's free, like uh, in this uh, mini video, it's, it's free to make some mistakes too. And it's okay to make mistakes. After the session, we have a time to discuss why did they do this and to uh, improve. This kind of uh, formation helps him to crystallize his uh, formation as, and his actor of his own formation. But when you have a tool, a strong tool like virtual reality, you want to use it everywhere because it's cool and also you see a lot of return on investment. And I maybe will talk about something obvious, but uh, you have to target the knowledge where you have the best return on investment. That seems logical, but not so, I not so often have customers wanting to target them at first because they are searching for what knowledge uh, is the best. And then that's why um, I wanted to explain you a little bit about the strong uh, virtual reality uh, topics. Uh, it's more about where you are physically present. When you want to repeat and repeat movements where you want to have a very natural understanding because you have visuals, very, uh, very visual uh, interpretation of all your schemes. Okay, so one um, short story about the devil is in the detail, is that um, the name of the, the application. Um, well, the, the application was uh, a huge success in 2016, and um, it was known externally of the company as ITX VR. And internally, we named this application Gazeduc. And um, this both both names was um, a confusion for the for, yes for the company, and it well it was um, an obstacle obstacle <laughs> to the development into the company. So like just a name was an obstacle. Mm -hmm. And also talking about details, we also have um, this one on the left. Uh, we have put some grass just of the aesthetic choice. We've put some grass on the gas system. And a uh, fun fact was the gas experts always wanted to pull this grass from the ground. So we asked them, why are you trying to pull the grass? And, and he answered, I usually, when I go to this kind of system, I usually pull the grass from the ground because it's very expensive to buy the services from a company to pull them. So it's an habit, and that's a strong detail because thanks to these kinds of detail, this guy was just at home. He was just inside his gas station. And thanks to this immersion, he has all the natural reflexes of his brain activated in him. Um, and what about the bucket? Yeah, the bucket is closed. The bucket was not at the, in the first define of the project, but we had to put all the tools of the gas expert inside the system. And we asked 
the field guards experts, where do you put your tools? And they actually had this information. This was not an official inf information, but they always have a bucket where they put all the tools and put these buckets under the pipes in a secure, in a secure place. And this, kinds, this kind of deta details are very important because that's what makes the application very natural for them. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And um, thanks to uh, the kind of detail, the emission is complete and uh, the, this application is widely adopted by the operators. And um, well, we have plenty of uh, anecdotes like this. And if you want to know them, <laughs> please, you come at the booth E44. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.